Hello viewer, before you watch today's video we need you to agree to the following terms. Number 1, please do not watch this video, if you are easily frightened. Number 2, if you do not like this video, refrain from using foul language in the comments. Number 3, nothing is always what it appears to be. Now that you have read and hopefully agreed to our terms you can watch. Enjoy the video. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your favorite commentary YouTuber who's always sweet and never sour, Candy Kid Cartoons here. Welcome back to another video where today we are talking about analog horror. Analog horror has become one of the most popular types of videos on this platform. If you don't know what analog horror is, it's a little subgenre of horror where you basically have a seemingly normal video with an old VHS looking filter on. Then at some point in the video, things start to deviate from its normal seeming appearance, and then it starts to become something more spooky. Something that seems impossible, but you believe that it's possible because it seems so real. It seems like that impossible thing could be sitting, or standing, right behind you. At least that's my understanding of it. So today we are going to be talking about the Backroom series made by Kane Pixels. First, we're going to start off with the main video that everyone is talking about, but before that, I want to immediately acknowledge that this guy makes all this stuff with CGI and he is 16 years old. I'm 16 and these videos are the best that I can do. This guy's definitely going places in life. In his main video, I mostly enjoy the transition from the world the recorder knows into some unknown dimension and pretty much everything before that. If it were any other scenario before the transition, like him just walking down the street, we'd be asking the question, why is he recording? But here we see that he and his friends are setting up a film of some sort, and then we very abruptly, but smoothly transition into the back rooms when he tries to get a wider angle for the film by backing up. I also really like how the guy recording was supposed to respond to his environment. At first he calls out to see if anyone else is there with him. The character himself has no idea this is meant to be a horror video and he's trapped in some sort of nightmare scape. For all he knows, he fell backwards and was knocked out on the pavement and he was moved somewhere else by his friends so in his mind it's the logical decision. But in the viewer's mind, since they know it's a scary video, they already know being loud could alert some sort of evil creature. Speaking of evil creatures, the way he responds to seeing the creature for the first time is accurate to what most people would do. I myself would be the person who would run despite the words on the walls saying to stay still. I mean, I don't know who wrote those. Maybe the monster did to make people think it'll go away if you don't move when in reality, it makes it easier for it to get you. And then there are also just the smaller pieces of it that just add on to how scary it is. Like the monster peeking out from the corners, or the repeated flicking of the light switch in this one part. When he flicks the light switch, the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh man, the monster's going to appear at some point, yet it doesn't, which adds on to the suspense making you wonder where it is and why he wasn't followed down the chute. I actually have a small theory about it. When the guy falls down those little chutes, he goes back to the real world, and the monster isn't allowed to go there. The first time he went back, he probably ended up in the research facility that attempted to access the back rooms in his other videos, which is why there's a door leading back there later on. I haven't seen any theory videos on this so far, so if someone already else came up with the theory, then credit to them. Then the final thing that I want to talk about is the amount of jump scares in the main video. Unless you would count the first chase with the monster as a jump scare, there was only one jump scare right at the end, and I personally loved it. When I knew the video was almost over and saw no jump scares, I didn't think there was going to be one even though the monster was very close to him. Before he goes into the shoot, he looks back two times. The first time, everything's chill and nothing's there. Then the second time, it's right there and he falls down the chute. I jumped and nearly screamed. I've never done that before when I've been jump scared watching stuff like Five Nights at Freddy's gameplay. I jumped but never in my life have I been on the brink of screaming. So that makes this the best jump scare I've ever seen. 
Overall, this is a 10 out of 10 video series that I highly recommend to those who are into a good scare, because for something that's meant to be scary, it was pretty enjoyable. And if Kane is watching this video, I just want to say, great job, man. That's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.